All right, let's continue with some more block sanding. We're just gonna run through this panel here. Just work our way around. Maybe I'll do this one. I don't know, I'll just do a few panels and then uh, get those things blocked once, do some glazing. Um, the ones I need to do next or two is this one in the front and the ones in the side there. I also need to do inside here. But I don't know how much of it I'll get in the video, but let's work our way along, do a little more, and then get this once I get done. I have to resand all these here up in the front and uh, get these things sanded, and then maybe do a little glazing over the where the pits are and stuff like that, kind of make it look a little better. It doesn't matter because this is going to get covered with with a seat stand mat anyway. So. I don't know how much I'm going to do to them. Maybe I'll just sand them once, one time, and then reshoot them with primer. Okay, also, I got to sand and prime this thing. I also have to fix this here. Got to finish that. Anyway, we'll move on. Let you guys watch your hyperlapse. So you can see some of the little high spots here. What we're really looking for is this low, like that right there, a little low spot there, here, here, uh, a couple down there where the spot welds are along this edge. There's a lot of stuff all over, um, like this here. It's low, and I got a high spot right there. I can knock that down and then uh, fill all around it. Um, they're just all over the place. I knew there would be a lot uh, on this side. There's a lot more work done over here. So, long panel came out really good. You guys watch that part. Uh, there wasn't much to do there, really. This one, you know, this got pretty warped. So, that got a little bunch of stuff here. This whole area right here is low. Um, then you can see around here, it's just so much easier with that guide coat to find all the stuff you're looking for. And then this one may need to get another prime after this at, at least, you know, to make sure. But if you look here at the corner, there's not that much. Pretty much got that. You know, it might be just a little bit kind of going in, but it's nothing that you can really see unless you really look for. Uh, not really, don't think it is on this side. I think it's in the back. So, be a little bit to correct there, no big deal. Anyway, uh, that's kind of what you're doing, block sanding. And we'll see some more stuff in a little bit. I'm going to get the glazing out and start filling in those lows. That takes a while to do. Right, let's just see if this video is coming out okay first. Um, the first thing I want to tell you guys is, <clears throat> no, I don't have coronavirus. I always have phlegm because um, I have allergies. But um, what we get here is um, 
<clears throat> hang on a second let me get this cleared out so what we get here is um, if you see here there's a high spot here in here and they're very gradual so what I'm telling you guys right now is you kind of depending on how cherry you want to take it you know this is where your blocking kind of takes you you know if you want to go fully cherry you better make sure there's none of that stuff shows up maybe kind of it'll, it'll show up but what I'm always doing is I have like a happy medium between perfect and not so perfect and so I feel stuff out and this is the hard part is you got to kind of know what show what's going to show up and what isn't like this right here you can see that it's kind of low along the edge um, that will show up okay this could show up but it probably won't because it's down low on the body line and it's at a curve so at a curved area less likely to see a wave if it was right here in the middle of the door it'd probably show up really bad and then you want to take care of it so what I do is I don't try and get everything perfect now if I was doing show car I'd make sure all that stuff was absolutely perfect um, then of course I would get done and have so much time invested wouldn't want to drive it not the way I build stuff so I'm looking at stuff and I'm deciding decision making is your hardest part about body work and blocking um, there is a high spot right here right there okay and I can feel that one but it's on a rounded area so I think I might knock that one down a little just that little nib right there but um, there is a little bit of a low right beside it I don't know if I'll fix that I think I'll just knock that down so like I said is my stuff completely cherry no it, it's because I don't want to spend the time but I want it to look good so there's a happy medium in there of blocking stuff and finding everything like there's a little tiny low right here but it's in a curve very unlikely it'll show up so um, it's very very small low it's like so you know that's where the skill comes in of knowing you know what's going to show up what isn't what you can get away with and because we're not looking at trying to make it perfect we're trying to get away with what we can get away with to make it look good but not spend the time to get it perfect that's what i'm doing i don't do the other so i don't i don't spend that time this along this edge i'm going to sand that a little bit more and then see if that goes down because i can feel it it'll show up may or may not bother me i'm not sure if i send it down a little more a little more primer you know level level that out with a little more primer i can probably get that down to where i want it to be and i'll just fill this right here and that's about i think all i'll do on this one and this one's ready so anyway that's just kind of how you how i do my decision making on my stuff it does another thing i do is perfect <clears throat> it looks good it looks looks like it's perfect from 10 feet away but it's not the same so it does take a lot more time to do it the other way. Just want to let you guys know that. Alright, so I got a little, 
uh, there's a lot of sanding done here. It's a lot smoother. It looks terrible right now. But you can see all this is the glazing that's been sanded. And then uh, I got a couple spots that I just re put some more on. Because uh, it wasn't quite deep enough to fill that. It was just a little bit deeper. I still haven't sanded this door yet. And I know there's some more to put on there. I'm going to do the hubcaps too. Like so, instant I did this one here. I did sanding on it. I'm going to do the final sanding on that. This door has been sanded and then glazed this already. And this is ready to prime. And from there I can block it one time and it'll be ready to paint, I believe. So, not much. You know, maybe just a couple little spots. and Maybe a spot prime or something like that, but not a full prime. Uh, but this is going to need... This is going to just going to sand these. And then probably... I don't know, maybe I'll just... Uh, just a prime spot prime over those with a spray can. Sounds good. Looks like that's coming back a little closer once I put sand that again. Hopefully I got it far enough out. It, it was just kind of bowed in a little bit. Well, a couple things. These doors were, you know, these were the hardest thing there is really on this whole thing. Could have replaced them probably. Might have been easier, but, you know, hey, what's the challenge of fixing them? I mean, this is really pretty straight now. You know, once this gets uh, another coat on here and then block sanded with a DA. Um, real quick, I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about block sanding with a DA. Hopefully, um, we'll, I will, we'll listen to this. And, you know, it, it's not for everybody. You know, it, it, not some people can't do it. Um, and I use uh, these also, these hard blocks with these soft blocks like this right here, like really soft. You get these at our right parts. And... Um, box in with a DA. Um, you need a good pad. If your pad's junk and it's walk, walking, it's no good. You need a, and I use a, a, you know, one of these 3M style uh, tapered pads. It's really handy. Um, you need to have the proper DA. The DA, if you get like a, a DA that's um, 3 8 like if you use a DAQ, I'll show you what they look like. Like if you use this DA right here, this is a this is a National Detroit DAQ. It has a 3 8 throw. Um, they don't work very good for block sanding. Uh, these do. This is a Hutchins. But you better have a big compressor. And this is a uh, fake um, DAQ. Uh, they don't work very good for blocking. But this does. This works really good. But this one just uses up so much air. I don't use it much. So the trick is, is to hold it. You know, you have to be very good with the DA. Okay, is to hold it flat. 
and, and, and when you're when you're when you're holding it flat, you're kind of pushing just a little bit. Like, watch how much I'm moving it. I'm pushing it on the edge just a little bit, and you work that just by pushing up just barely on an edge like that. It's not it's not like this. It's like this. You can just see that little tiny bit of movement to where you can almost put your eye where it's focused on the top of the DA. Um, you, you're not you're not you're not pushing hard and and the other thing is is don't push on the DA you hold the DA on the surface and let the DA do the work if you're pushing on it what happens is you're pushing it and the metal moves so on some of this flat stuff the metal moves a lot and you'll get waves in the work you know I, I did BMWs Mercedes um, Rolls Royce I used to do it with the DA blocking and people go, no way, it never turns out. No, it, I did it. I did it for years. When I was a, a, a paint, painter in a body shop, I used a DA to block everything. And I know several guys who did the same thing, and we made it come out come out really good. Now, we didn't block everything. I'm going to say we didn't just finish everything with the DA. Then what we did is we took... Well, I would say I'm going to probably have to do these one more time. Um, there were just a lot to do here. I mean, look at that. <laughs> That's a lot of feathering and stuff going on. But I think I got the lines, you know, coming there. They're almost, you know, this is pretty straight now. It's going, it needs another coat of primer that'll really find everything. You know, to get find what I'm going to find. I got a little ding right in the corner there I just found. So I'm going to have to fix, still have to do this. So it's not going to really, you know, tie me up too much. But anyway, I'm going to, oh, oh, one of the things I was going to say is um, if you guys really want to see what my nicer work is, um, nobody's watched this video, um, a 65 Mustang. There's a playlist playlist on the, on the channel, 65 Mustang build. You can go to the farther towards the end videos, uh, which like there's only like 1,300 views on them or something like that. Um, take a look at the Mustang. That was all blocked with the DA. <laughs> he won't believe it. I mean, it's straight as an arrow. It's basically, uh, I blocked it with the DA. Then I did like one hand block with that little block that I showed you, the, um, the one I used. You know, I didn't really, my buses I didn't do that with at all. I just DA'd them. And just did the corners and edges with the with the soft block, and that was it. I didn't use any hand blocking at all, none. But on that car, I went over it. Uh, I think I did a real quick hand block after I did a DA. So I did a DA, then I ran over it with a hand block real quick, and then painted it. And there is no waves. There's no orange peel. There's nothing in it. But take a look at the video on that. I think I'll put a link down. In the description on this one so put it in there take a look and you guys will be tripping out on that that's a, a pretty nice paint job I did you know I I just did it I don't usually do other people's cars but it was a friend of mine he had Parkinson's and he said if I don't if you don't paint my car it's probably not gonna ever get driven so I had to do it so anyway that's it for that I'm gonna go ahead and do the primer and then we'll see how it looks you guys might want to see these um, yeah, and the, the Mustang was, uh, British racing green, which is basically black almost. So give you a good idea of what I can, what I've done. You know, I mean, I did way nicer cars than that many years ago. I did that car really fast. Um, but anyway, these are all, that's mostly done with the DA and did just ran over it with this soft block afterwards. Uh, and then just took the little waves out you get from the DA and that's edge DA. So not bad. It's got the paint on there. Should look pretty good. All right, so that door looks like it's about ready to go. Sand it one more time. Spot prime it a couple times, a couple places if I need to. 
and then it's basically ready for paint even. So it's looking pretty smooth. I got a couple pot drips in it. Um, I forgot to clean my gun. You know, my pot was dripping a little bit there. It doesn't usually, but it did that time, right? Didn't that suck? Happens to everybody, right? So you can look at the line right there. Doesn't look bad, you know, looks all right. Nothing notice, nothing you'll notice just walking up to it. And you can fill that with some seam sealer too. Like that one, I'm actually gonna fill that with seam sealer. I'm just gonna take the cocking gun and just shoot it in there and wipe it with my finger. And that's usually, that's usually how you do them when everything goes right. But uh, this looks pretty straight. I mean, it's definitely got, you know, I missed a ding here and a couple over here and then the bottom corner and then this little thing right here still got to do but I need to block the whole door again just because when I hit the filler um, you know I'm noticing some pinholes I gotta catch there's like some right in here and you can see those little pinholes from that filler it's not too bad with pinholes but it definitely pinholes more than AG47. AG47 doesn't pinhole. I don't think. I don't think. I don't remember ever fixing a pinhole with that. So then I've got this fatty here that was from last coat that I've got to sand out. Anyway, I got to do my hand sanding there in the corners. I just wasn't into it right now because I had so much to do. I wanted to get the bigger areas done. The lines are starting to look like kind of better. You got a little more to go on those get them right of course um yeah I'll check the link below i'll put a link in here for the mustang all done you can take a look at that one then you kind of see what i'm not going to go that nice maybe with this i mean i don't know it might turn out that nice just because you know yeah i don't know it might but it might not i'm not going for that i'm not you know mustang i wasn't really going for much anything you anyway, i was just doing it and it was like a good car and I just thought you know what and Chuck's you know his last hurrah really I mean he's a good guy and he's he's still doing well he actually got some different meds and he's been eight years into Parkinson's so he won't be able to drive for too much longer and I thought well it'd be nice to have a nice car to drive for that last bit so anyway because he's, he's in the 60s now I think anyway Anyway, that's uh, that's it for this video. I'll talk to you in the next one. Please like, share, and subscribe. See what you guys have to say. And uh, I think you guys are liking the way this thing's looking. I mean, this is coming out super straight. I mean, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have guessed it. You know, I, I'm not trying to make it like this super super cherry, you know, thing or anything. But it's going to turn out pretty darn nice. It's going to be a nice looking van. So when it's all done, and uh, be real original looking. So it'll look like it's unscathed, right? Isn't that what everyone wants to see? The the unmolested? <laughs> but this thing's totally molested. I love it. <laughs> Talk to you in the next video.